Greetings, everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed that Ezekiel 31. I mean, it's, uh, you know, that is a chapter that nobody in a denominate, demon nominational church will touch with a 10 foot pole. And, uh, you know, everybody thinks, oh, that Bob, he's crazy uh, after that chapter 30 study where I mentioned, you know, did all races come from Adam? Well, Ezekiel 31 pretty much shows you there were other people in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. I mean, you know, uh, the Assyrian was a cedar in the garden. And all the other trees, family trees, envied him. Well, trees don't have emotions. So they're talking about family trees. And the Assyrian and the other trees were already in the garden. So, I mean, it's pretty, you know, figures of speech. It's pretty plain and clear. I mean, you know, it's, and this is, I had an 1890s uh, church book. It was like a Bible, uh, maybe it was a Bible college book. I'm not sure. Uh, I had it about 20 years ago. And this is the kind of stuff they taught 100 years ago. Well, a little over 100 years ago. But it was an 1890s uh, theology book. And they knew what was up. And uh, my, uh, at the time, I was, uh, I had relocated from Tennessee to Florida. I'd hurt my back working. And uh, so I was staying with dad. And his, uh, his Dobie, she was a sweet girl. She took the book out of the bookcase and chewed it to pieces. I was like, oh, man. You know? But she had been abused. She was a rescue dog. Uh, and I, I, you know, what are you going to do? It's just a dog. Uh, it had leather, had a leather cover and probably horse glue. And she sniffed it and said, man, this smells good. And she chewed it to pieces. It was not worth, I couldn't, I couldn't, there was no way to save that book. I mean, you know, Doberman's jaws are, uh, you know, if it had been a chihuahua, I probably could have, but uh, Dobie, no. So when people uh, say, oh, well, Bob, you're all wrong about Ezekiel 31. Well, let me tell you something. A hundred years ago, abortion was illegal. There was no Church of Satan. Uh, those that committed, uh, well, let's just say the residents of Sodom, what they did was illegal. You didn't have don't ask and uh, don't tell in the military. And you didn't have people arguing over, you know, rights for those, for that stuff. So were they, and they weren't getting married either. So were the people in the 1890s, were they just a bunch of hypocrites and evil that wanted to deprive people of their rights? Or did they really know what was going on and this is the time of the great falling away? Well, if you think Calvary Chapel and all those TV preachers on, you know, the television preachers are uh, doing God's work, well, you won't like me. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll get to join them for their, where they're going for their eternal reward. So the Bible says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. You know, and Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 
chapter 13 and verse 5, he says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't want to be a reprobate, that's for sure. And then in 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul writes to study, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And of course, to the demon nominational dispensational preacher of rapture crowd, that means uh, studying uh, Larkin's uh, book called Dispensational Lies. I mean, I mean dispensational truth where he chops the Bible up into all these different time periods. But that's not what dispensation means. It means uh, to be given something. It does absolutely does not mean a period of time. It has nothing to do with a period of time. So, but they'll tell you, oh yeah, it's a period of time. God works different ways in different times. But the Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, you know, dis dispensation means to dispense. It means to give something. Moses was the dispensation of law. He, God gave Moses the law, and law gave, uh, J Moses gave the law to Israel. Jesus gave us grace. Big difference. Of course, your dispensational church thinks the Antichrist are God's chosen people. Uh, if you don't know what an Antichrist is, uh, well, let me give you something to look up real quick. And by the way, we're going to be doing Ezekiel chapter 32. Definition of an Antichrist, 1 John 2 and verse Chapter 2 and verse 22. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. So, look around the world at religious groups of people. Find out those that deny that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, they're looking for another Messiah. And then you'll know who the Antichrists are. Of course, your demon nominational churches teach the chosen ones. All right, let's do Ezekiel chapter 32. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Ezekiel 32, verse 1. And it came to pass in the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Boy, I'll tell you what, the uh, Lord doesn't sound like he likes Pharaoh very much. Or Egypt. And say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas, and thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troublest the waters with thy feet, and foulest their rivers. So he, when he touched the rivers, he made them foul. Verse 3, Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Now, what do you do with a net? Well, fishermen's you fishermen use nets to catch fish, right? Yeah. Verse 4. Then will I leave thee upon the land. I will cast thee forth upon the open field and will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain upon thee. And I will fill the beasts of the whole earth with thee. So I guess the buzzards are going to fill their stomachs with uh, the dead. Verse 5. And I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains and fill the valleys with thy height. 
Listen to this, verse 6. I will also water with thy blood. Wow. You know how you go into the garden and you water the plants with your hose? Well, God's going to water the ground with their blood. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. Oh boy. Where have we read this before? Well, how about Isaiah 13? Um, Isaiah 13, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. The day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Interesting. Uh, that is same kind of language they use in uh, Joel. Same kind of language in Revelation. What about Mark 13? Verse 23. Mark 13 is a alternate version of Matthew 24, the end time chapter. Uh, somebody wrote me or left a comment or something, and they said, you know, why did Jesus go to so much trouble to explain what things would be like in the end times if we're not going to be here? Good question. Why would he go to so much trouble to tell people what things would happen before the end if we weren't going to be here? Oh, don't worry about it. You're going to fly away in the pre-trib rapture before this happens. All this other information, that's for the other guys left behind. Yeah, right. Mark 13, 22. He tells you, For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders, false miracles, and shall show, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Pay attention. He's showing you all these things, right? Take heed. But in those days, after that tribulation, after that tribulation, not before, oh, Chaplain Bob, that's mistranslated. That's what my pre-trib rapture teacher taught me. Sorry, Charlie. I trust the King James Bible. You know, I have about as much respect for a used car salesman than I do for TV preachers. Maybe less. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened. The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Right? Same time. I could I could read out of Revelation. I could read Matthew 24. Uh, you know, the Lord tells you what's going to happen. Verse 7. 
Ezekiel 32, 7. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. And I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. I will also vex the hearts of many people, when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their kings shall be horribly afraid of thee, uh, horribly afraid for thee, when I shall brandish my sword before them, and they shall tremble at every moment, every man, every man for his own life, in the day of thy fall. For thus saith the Lord God, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall. The terrible of the nations, all of them, and they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt, and all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. I will destroy also all the beasts thereof from beside the great waters. Neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more, nor hooves of beast trouble them. Then will I make their waters deep and cause the rivers to run like oil, saith the Lord God. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country shall be destitute of what thereof it was full, when I shall smite all them that dwell therein, then shall they know that I am the Lord. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nations shall lament her. They shall lament for her even for Egypt and for all her multitude, saith the Lord God. It came to pass also in the twelfth year, in the fifteenth day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. The, have you ever heard of the nether world? Uh, it's talking about the place of the dead. Unto the nether parts of the earth with them that go down into the pit. Whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. Now remember, circumcision was a sign for the Lord's people. So the uncircumcised are those who are not God's people. Verse 20, they shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. Oh, Chaplain Bob, there's no hell. A loving, kind God would never create hell. Well, tell that to Jesus. Jesus talked about hell a lot. He said, Jesus said that hell was created for the devil and his angels. And I love these uh, so-called Christian identity people. They say there's no hell, there's no devil, and yet the devil uh, got Eve pregnant. Uh, if you got, if you could figure that one out, let me know. Cause I can't figure that one out. How does a being that doesn't exist get Eve pregnant? And then, uh, he's going down into a hell that doesn't exist. Uh, scratching my head. I, I, I can't figure that one out. So. 
Verse 21, the strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down. They lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Asher, Asher, um, Asher was one of the tribes of Israel, by the way. Asher is there and all her company. His graves are all about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. There is Elam and all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which cause their terror in the land of the living. Yet they have borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. Verse 25. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Though their terror was caused in the land of the living, Yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put into the midst of them that be slain. Uh, a little note here. There's three words, basically, maybe four, that are translated as hell. One is Sheol, a uh, Hebrew word for uh, the grave. And then there's Gehenna, which was, a, uh, they named a garbage dump that was constantly burning in Jerusalem. And they want you to think that, you know, that's, they just cremated the bodies in the garbage pit, you know, and burned them up. That's hell. And, um, and then there was Tartarus, which was the deepest abyss of hell, where the fallen angels are kept in change of darkness. I think that's in Jude. And then there was Hades, which the Greeks uh, named that he was the god of the underworld. I mean, just because you take a Bible word and turn it into something else doesn't mean it's false. Unicorns. When did a unicorn become a horse with a horn coming out of its uh, forehead? Uh, you know, farting rainbows when it flies through the air. I mean, come on. You know what a unicorn is? It was an Asian rhino. It had one horn, as opposed to the African rhinoceros, which has two horns. Yeah. It's even called uh, unicornus, unicornis. It's even spelled unicorn with an I-S on the end. Rhino, rhinoceros, or rhinoceros, you know? When did a Asian rhino become a uh, a horse? You know they they've renamed everything. It's just like the months and the planets. They named the planets after Greek and Roman gods. Who named them? Not me. Not God. You know who named all the days of the week? Saturn Day, or I mean Saturday. You know who named the months? Not me. I didn't do it. All right, let's read 26. So in hell, it's talking about, you know, the group people in hell. There is Meshach, Tubal. Uh, these were, um, I forget if these were uh, associated with Gog or Magog or if they're associated with Cain. Either way, they're not good. Uh, you ever heard of two-ball cane? That's a Masonic password, by the way. Uh, there is Meshach, two-ball, and all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they cause their terror in the land of the living. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war, and they have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquities 
shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised, and shalt lie with them that are slain with the sword. Verse 29. There is Edom. Now, Edom was the, uh, what uh, Esau, he was the father of the Edomites. There is Edom, her kings and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them that were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised and with them that go down to the pit. There be the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians. Zidonians were uh, not a very nice people, from what I read in the Bible. And all the Zidonians, which are gone down with the slain, with their terror, they are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised, uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude. Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God. For I have caused my terror. Do you know God's a God of terror? To the wicked. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. And that is the end of Ezekiel 32 and verse 32. That's the end. Ezekiel 32, 32. Boy, I'll tell you what, it is a whole lot of judgment. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.